Hello, uh, this is Ahmad Farag Ali. I am going to uh, explain the solution for cosmological constant problem that I found and that I have written in recently in a paper. <clears throat> so let us first know what exactly the cosmological constant problem is. According to Einstein field equation, which is formulated as g mu nu plus lambda g mu nu equal to 8 by g divided by c to 4 t mu nu. g mu nu here means the geometric part in Einstein field equation. Lambda is the cosmological constant. g mu nu here is the space-time metric. g is the gravitational constant. and C is a speed of light, T mu nu here is the energy momentum tensor. But when we set G mu nu equal to zero, we get a direct relation between vacuum energy density that comes from the energy momentum tensor and lambda, which is the cosmological constant. Through the relation rho vacuum equal to C square lambda divided by eight by G. Here is the relation that I am talking about. That is exactly the relation between the vacuum energy density and the cosmological constant. Based on the astrophysical measurements of the universe expansion, it was found that lambda is given by 1.1 10 to minus 52 meter to minus 2. Okay, this means that when we compute the vacuum energy density we can call it the observed vacuum energy density, we got 10 to minus 47 giga electron volt to 4 by h bar c cube. The problem is, when we started to compute the vacuum energy density in the quantum field theory, which is defined as the minimum energy of the, of the quantum field, we got a value related to the force exponent of the Planck energy and this equal to 10 to 76 giga electron volt to 4 by h bar c cube what does that mean when you compare the vacuum energy density computed from quantum field theory by the observed vacuum energy density which is computed from the astrophysical measurements and based on general theory of relativity you get a discrepancy of 10 to 123. This is considered as the worth disagreement between the theory and the experiment. The theory here is the quantum field theory and the experiment here is the observation of universe expansion. So this problem has been a long-standing problem for more than 40 years. Many scientists even tried to solve it using many assumptions like extra dimensions uh, like uh, multiverses and many, many other approaches. In, in this paper, I'm introducing a solution based only on the measurements and understanding the symmetry of the standard model through the universe. Let us start. The first thing we know about that, we have both theories, quantum field theory and the general theory of relativity. And the both of them have experimental success. But they clash when we compute the vacuum energy density according to each of them. The discrepancy is around of 10 to 123. There must be something wrong about our understanding. And what I realized is that the cosmological constant problem resulted from a fundamental misunderstanding of both theories. And in this paper, I'm, I try to clarify this misunderstanding. First, let us look at the universe, the history of the universe. As we know, the universe started according to the most acceptable theory in cosmology by Big Bang, and then it goes through the inflation. And at the electroweak scale, the matter started to be created. And Specifically, what happens exactly at the electroweak scale, the SU2 symmetry of weak nuclear force is, pro is broken, and we only have SU3 symmetry and the U1 symmetry. 
SU3 here for, for strong nuclear force and the U1 here for electromagnetic force. I ask a very simple question. What happens when the universe is, is getting colder? So, as we know, it initially started with SU3 cross SU2 cross U1. At electroweak scale, it, the symmetry reduced to SU3 cross U1. But the question I asked, what happens near zero Kelvin? Near zero Kelvin, an experimental Mesner effect happens, which has been verified experimentally through many experiments and through understanding many materials. It is found that near zero Kelvin, the Mesner effect happens, breaking U1 symmetry and leaving SU3 as the remnant symmetry for the vacuum near zero Kelvin. Of course, the minimum energy of the quantum field is defined by the remnant SU3 symmetry near zero Kelvin, according to that understanding. What Mesner effect means? It means that it happens on materials. It universally shows superconductivity. What superconductivity means? It means zero resistance and the material starts to expel magnetic field, breaking U1 symmetry. So here, I establish the solution or the analysis I am proposing based on experiment, which is Mesner effect. This diagram can explain the idea very simply. We started with SU3 cross SU2 cross U1. At electroweak, uh, at electroweak scale, we end up with SU3 cross U1. But near zero Kelvin, we end up only with SU3. The idea about SU3 it is not long range force, it is short range force. It exists only within 10 to minus 15 meters. So the a logical question should arise. How many SU3 volumes or SU3 atoms or SU3 units could exist in the whole universe in that cold state? This can be computed by dividing the universe volume by proton volume. Why proton volume? Because the proton is the size it has the size at which SU3 symmetry is affected. When we do this, we got a number equal to 10 to 123. That is exactly the number that corresponds precisely to this, the discrepancy between quantum field theory value of vacuum energy density and the observable vacuum energy density according to the universe expansion and according also to the general theory of relativity. This means, in quantum field theory, the vacuum, we had the discrepancy because we assumed that the vacuum is composed of one atom of SU3, and that is incorrect. When we consider the vacuum is composed of only one atom of SU3, we got this large number of 10 to 76, which caused the discrepancy with the observed vacuum energy density. But when we use the symmetry analysis we perform it now, using the Mesner effect, we found that the vacuum must be composed of 10 to 123 atoms, each accepting SU3 symmetry. To match the observable vacuum energy density, we must divide the quantum field theory vacuum energy density by the number of SC3 remnant vacuum atoms. When we do this, we got exactly the values that match the observable vacuum energy density. And we got a consistency between quantum field theory and the general theory of relativity. Therefore, the cosmological constant problem is solved based on this simple symmetry analysis of the universe through But our results here reveal that the vacuum energy density is composed of 10 to 123 atoms of SU3. This means the space-time could be fundamentally discrete. It could be Lorentzian, but it could be also discrete. And we have in physics solutions that Lorentzian quantum space-time. I believe that this may open a lot of investigation into understanding the nature of quantum space-time based on SU3 symmetry. 
The solid thing about that solution is that the solution only relies only on the measurements like universe radius and proton radius. It does not require any non-measurable assumptions such as extra dimensions or multiverses. Since the number of SU3 atoms resolves the discrepancy, these atoms must be stable and unbreakable. There must be a fundamental law operating near zero Kelvin that protects these atoms from vanishing. Fortunately, we have that fundamental law. It is the third law of thermodynamics, which states that it is impossible to reach absolute zero Kelvin in a finite number of processes. Because we know at zero Kelvin, both volume and pressure vanishes by definition. But third law says, no, it is not possible to reach to that state physically. This means the volume of SU3 atom can be protected by the third law of thermodynamics. Therefore, the third law of thermodynamics can guarantee the stability of SU3 atoms near zero Kelvin. It can also explain for us why quarks are confined within finite volume, because this volume is protected by the third law of thermodynamics. This establishes a profound link between quark confinement and the third law of thermodynamics. The third law of thermodynamics also implies that the universe will continue to expand forever. Conclusion here. First, we studied the symmetry evolution in which the universe cooling led to evolution of standard model symmetry from SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 to SU3 cross U1 at electric scale and near zero Kelvin breaking U1 near 0 Kelvin due to the Mesner effect, leaving SU3 symmetry as the remnant symmetry. When we compute the number of SU3 atoms in the universe, we got 10 to 123 atoms in the universe, explaining the discrepancy between quantum field theory and the observable vacuum energy bursts. When we Studied the vacuum composition, symmetry analysis reveals that the vacuum is composed of 10 to 123 atoms, requiring QFT vacuum energy density to be divided by this number for consistency with observable values. The solution here does not require extra dimensions. The solution also does not require multiverses ideas. Stability and by thermodynamics, the stability and the unbreakability of SU3 atoms are ensured by the third law of thermodynamics that work near zero Kelvin, and therefore explaining the quark confinement within a finite volume near zero Kelvin using the third law of thermodynamics. Thank you so much for your attention.